Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And as all of you are probably already aware, a Pokemon Presents has been officially announced by the Pokemon Company for next week on August 8th. And in the teaser trailer, there was some very strange things going on, so let's discuss it and let's discuss what my expectations will be for this Pokemon Presents. Now, a new Pokemon Presents means the community is going to be speculating ad nauseum about what we're going to see. And since I am just like the rest of them, I figured let's needlessly speculate about what we might see in next week's Pokemon Presents. This is a very busy month for the Pokemon Company. We have the ramp up to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC. We have this Pokemon Presents which is going to be one of the longest Pokemon Presents ever. It's going to be about 35 minutes in length. This month, we also have the Pokemon World Championships in Japan, and generally, in World Championship years, we get some kind of information or trailer related to the new games, whether it's a specific new Pokemon revealed, just a little side trailer showing off some battle stuff. This is the type of thing they usually do at Worlds. So it's going to be a busy month for news and a busy month for Pokemon, and that's very exciting. But they also did some some interesting things with this Presents announcement. They gave it a very strange neon purple hue. They changed the logo for Pokemon Presents and for the Pokemon logo into this purple hue, the very neon looking, and it's led to a lot of speculation about what this could mean. Now, Pokemon is always very careful to promote their games in very specific ways. When they talk about new titles, it's always Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, not Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. When they talk about DLCs, it's Pokemon Scarlet Sword DLC and Pokemon Shield DLC. They use the full name, the full trademark, the full copyright. They're very specific with how they market their logos. One of the things that stood out a couple years ago about Pokemon Legends Arceus was that they changed the color scheme of the Pokemon logo to distinguish it from other mainline games. They do all of this very intentionally. So the fact that we're getting an alteration to a logo in an announcement for a Pokemon Presents tells me that there's going to be something here different. Whether this is a tease at something having to do with what we get from a DLC trailer, which everyone fully expects, a 35-minute Pokemon Presents in the middle of summer when the DLC could come out as early as next month when fall begins, because that is the release window they gave us for part one, we're going to see it. So I don't exactly know what this could have to do with the DLC. It could be connected to some story-related content. It could be related to some sort of side game or mobile app that they're going to be announcing. Whatever it is, it's going to be separate from the basic stuff that we usually get in these presents. They, at the end of the trailer, kind of just faded everything else out and showed us the purple M. So it's something to do with M some sort of title or subject matter that we should be getting clues about. Now, it could be something very just basic, like maybe they're bringing back Pokemon Mystery Dungeon remakes, or it could be some sort of new battle mechanic for the trading card game that they're going to announce. They generally do that sort of thing at Worlds as well. There's a whole bevy of things that it could be. There's a bunch of clickbait videos on the internet already talking about, oh, this means a brand new Mewtwo form, a Paradox Mewtwo is coming in the DLC because the M and the purple and Mewtwo is purple and pink and it's all connected. And if you see any of that, listen, it's fine to speculate. It's fine to joke around. Around, but that is baseless. There's no reason to believe that we're getting a Paradox Mewtwo, regardless of what Riddler Koo tweets on Twitter or X, whatever it is called nowadays. So what are my expectations for this Pokemon Presents? We've talked a lot about what they're teasing. We've talked a lot about what they generally show us. What do I expect and what do I hope for? Well, I'm going to talk about what I expect first. We'll get all of the basic things out of the way. They will do all of their shameless plugging for a Pokemon Go update. They'll talk about worlds happening. They'll probably do something regarding the TCG and that special retro original 151 TCG set that they announced a couple months back at a previous Pokemon Presents. We'll probably get more information about that. We'll get updates and, and blurbs for Detective Pikachu returns and probably a big time trailer for that game as it is due out this September or this fall. So those are the things that they're going to get out of the way. Cafe Remix will probably get a trailer. Masters EX will get a trailer. All the basic stuff that they do. They'll come to Scarlet and Violet's DLC. They'll go more in depth, at least in my opinion, on part one predominantly. They'll give us a firm release date for part one where we go to the land of Kitakami on a little field trip and we learn more about these Pokemon that the village worship. 
that is going to happen at this presents. We'll get the big meaty trailer. We'll get some overview talk about what you're going to experience. Maybe some new gameplay mechanics that are there in previous DLC. We've had things such as legendary hunting and other things to occupy us. So that is going to be gone into. We'll get that firm release date. I don't think we're going to get as much about Blueberry Academy and what's going on in part two of the DLC. I'm sure that it will get a part of the trailer, whether it's recycled footage or new footage of something we've already seen in the previous trailer. I think we'll probably see that, but I don't think they're going to give us a release date for part two. I think they're going to keep that pretty, you know, behind the close behind closed doors. When we get into September and October, hopefully after the first part of the DLC has come out i think that's when they'll begin to show us more about part two and we'll get that release date because right now it, it could come out next year like the window is so open for part two that we don't fully know when we're going to get it and we're in a tight window because once part one comes out you have the end of the year and once february rolls around next year we're going to get into the cycle for a new pokemon game so in that span of time that november december january span is when the game will come out but of course that's not a firm date and we won't get that here at least I don't think. So it's going to focus predominantly on part one. I think there's a world, hopefully, where Detective Pikachu Returns is not like a 15 minute part of this presents. I understand that we've been hoping and talking about a new Detective Pikachu game. One that we've known about is not been in development for years and it's finally coming. I just I hope they don't make the mistake of like dedicating half of the presents to Detective Pikachu. I mean, there's a world where the, the, the purple M and kind of like the mysterious looking color scheme is connected to Detective Pikachu. I really hope it's not. We'll see. As for other things that we could see in this presents, the more speculative side is, of course, about side games. I have been a big proponent for over a year. I even fell for what seemed like pretty good evidence of a brand new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game coming in some online, um, some text uh, coded into one of Pokemon's websites a couple months back. And that led me to speculate on here that we were going to get Pokemon Mystery Dungeon remakes back in February. And of course that didn't happen. I would love to say that they're going to announce a spin-off title in this Pokemon Presents. They're going to announce a Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky remake in the style of Explorer DX that we got a couple of years back, and then it's going to come out this holiday, and Pokemon is going to give us two spin-off titles this holiday season because, of course, their main series offerings are a lot lighter. It's DLC. It's not a brand new game. And even though in the latest earnings report we saw that Scarlet and Violet are still selling incredibly well, and this DLC will give it a boost going into the holiday season, it's not going to be the big offering. So I can see a world and perfectly believe one where we get another side game offering coming this fall, or we get the announcement of a, of a side game that's coming at the start of next year. I think that's perfectly plausible. I wouldn't bet money on it, unfortunately, because Pokemon Detective Pikachu Returns exists. That feels like it's their side game offering going into the holiday season, a title that they will push. There's a world where, like I said, that M is part of it. We'll see, unfortunately. That's what I think the big things are that we're going to see. There have been a couple leakers and a couple people online who have gotten some things right in the past, who have speculated that this is going to be a bigger presents than usual, and not just because of the runtime. There is some speculation out there that I don't necessarily agree with, that maybe they would take this opportunity to announce something coming next year. Maybe they would take this opportunity to tease a project coming next year and throw us a curveball. There's a lot of responses to that from the community that usually stem from the idea that why would you want to announce something when you have another product already coming? You have the DLC and you're going to be heavily marketing it. It's pushing your newest generation. Would Game Freak feel that announcing a new project for next year right now would cannibalize sales numbers and hype for that project? And I think that's perfectly legitimate, although I could make an argument that Legends Arceus cannibalized BDSP sales numbers a couple years back. They announced both at the same time. One came out a couple months prior. I know plenty of people who said, why would I buy BDSP? I'm just going to wait for Legends. So I don't think that's how Game Freak thinks and operates. If we get something huge and shocking, it would be genuinely shocking to me. I don't think this is going to be anything crazy. I think they're going to give plenty of airtime to Scarlet and Violet DLC. I think they're going to give plenty, but hopefully not a ton of airtime to Detective Pikachu Returns. And I think they'll do a bunch talking about the World Championships. 
And I think that's predominantly what we're going to get. I'm sure there will be something linking this mysterious purple coloring, but I, I want to be surprised. I, I don't want to be disappointed, but I can see a world where the community makes a bigger deal out of that tease than is needed. But we'll see. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section below. What do you think we're going to see from the Pokemon Presents next week? Of course, I will be covering it as news comes, so stick around here on the channel so you never miss anything. Subscribe and leave a like. It shows so much support. You guys wouldn't even understand how helpful it truly is. So with that, I'll leave you for today. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.